Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. It's morning time here in California, but I know some of you are joining us from around the U.S. and even around the rest of the world, so we welcome you all. In this session this morning, our focus is on mastering QuickBooks Online Accountant. Much of the content that we're going to discuss is applicable for global versions of QuickBooks Online. However, some other countries' versions may have different features and language. Um, in addition, things like payroll and tax are very different. But for the most part, <clears throat> this course will apply to everyone watching today. Uh, this course assumes that you are already familiar with QuickBooks Online, basically. Um, perhaps you're already using it with clients. Uh, as we discuss some of the different features of QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Online Accountant, I will assume that you are already familiar with the navigation, just the basic navigation at least. So again, welcome and let's get started. Our um, course today is eligible for CPE credit. You must stay in the session for the duration of this training. The session is eligible for an hour and a half of CPE. I will be providing CPE keywords um, at various random times during the session. I will read them aloud. You will see them on screen, so make note of them. You will need to know what they are at the end of the session. Um, when a survey will pop up on screen. You won't have to do anything, but a separate window will pop up on screen with the survey asking you what the keywords were, um, were and you can answer them. CPE uh, certificates will then be emailed directly to you within three weeks um, to the email address that you use to register for VCon. So, um, and then from there, once you receive the CPE certificate, um, it's your responsibility to keep it in your records. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Laura Redmond. I am a QuickBooks Online trainer. Um, I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, long time on both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. And I'm a member of the Intuit Trainer Writer Network. So, um, I, for example, was recently on the road last week teaching QuickBooks Online around Southern California. Hello to any of those of you that I saw last week. Um, I was also in the Bahamas last month at Scaling New Heights teaching the Advanced QuickBooks Online certification. So that was a wonderful conference, and hello to any of you that I saw there. Um, next year's Scaling New Heights is going to be based in Florida, so hope to see you all there. Um, I run Redmond Accounting Inc., which is a, a cloud-based client accounting services firm. We have multiple staff in different locations who are servicing our multiple clients. So all of our clients use QuickBooks Online, all of them. Um, for some of your firms, you'll be working with clients in QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop, maybe other um, solutions. Um, this is just a choice we made for our firm a few years ago. We went all cloud, so, um, so certainly for us, we appreciate that centralization of uh, access to all the data that QuickBooks Online provides um, and the efficiency of QuickBooks Online Accountant. <clears throat> I also uh, co-created an app called Arrow Workflow used by firms of the future to manage their knowledge capital and service delivery. And this really helps us know what work we're doing for our different clients um, when there are different staff working on different clients um, and all sorts of different services. So Arrow Workflow allows us to do that work and delegate work so that we can do the work consistently. Okay, for today's course, um, these are our learning objectives. Uh, QuickBooks Online Accountant is, um, is a, it's a special interface. It's a central access to all of the QuickBooks Online companies uh, that your clients are using. And QuickBooks Online Accountant was created by Intuit especially for accountants and bookkeeper users so that you have this dashboard where you can access all of your clients' QuickBooks Online companies from one central location. 
Um, and QuickBooks Online Accountant lets you collaborate with both your clients and your other team members of your firm. Um, it includes, in addition to that central access to your clients, it also includes some tools that are uh, inside of your clients' QuickBooks Online companies, uh, which only appear when you access QuickBooks Online from QuickBooks Online Accountant. And we're going to look at all of that today. Also, if for US users, if you use Intuit Tax Online, uh, there is a tool that will allow you to make some adjustments and then push the data from QuickBooks Online plus the adjustments, the off-book adjustments, into Intuit Tax Online. So um, this is another very helpful tool for QuickBooks Online Accountant. If you're a pro advisor, QuickBooks Online Accountant is also an easy way to access your ProAdvisor portal. So we're going to look at all of that um, today. Uh, let's start with the accountant firm tools. So what is QuickBooks Online Accountant? Because uh, this can be confusing for some people. It is not a separate software program. It's not a separate subscription. It's, you don't have to pay for it. It's not another version of QuickBooks Online. So let me clarify that. Your clients don't need to subscribe to QuickBooks Online Accountant instead of QuickBooks Online. Your clients can just subscribe to QuickBooks Online. There are three versions of that. They pick the one appropriate for them with the features they want. And then you as the accountant have uh, access to QuickBooks Online Accountant. And QuickBooks Online Accountant, some people call it a portal or central access. This is so that accountants can log into QuickBooks Online Accountant, and then they will see a central list of all of their clients. And from there, they can jump into each of their clients' QBO companies. Um, and again, when you access your clients' companies from QuickBooks Online Accountant, from your central list, then you also get additional accountant tools that your clients may not have access to. So an important piece of this is understanding the accountant user. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with QuickBooks Online, you know that your client, perhaps your client started their own QuickBooks Online company, or perhaps you created it for them. In any case, when you're in QuickBooks Online, you can navigate to the gear icon, Manage Users, and you can add users for the QBO company. And your client may invite their um, on-staff accountants or bookkeepers to that, but they also have the option to invite an accountant user. And an accountant user is a free user. Every QBO company has the option to add two free accountant users. Um, when your client invites you as the accountant user um, from the Manage User screen in their QBO company, uh, you will receive an email invitation which you will need to accept. And let me get that up on screen for you. When they invite you, you'll receive an email invitation that looks like this. You will need to click the um, Accept Invitation button in order to accept this invitation. So a couple of things to know about this. <clears throat> uh, when you receive this invitation in your email, it's very important that you um, log out of any QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Online accountant, any sort of Intuit ID uh, that you've signed into on a browser. You want to log out of that so that you're not already logged in when you accept it. So uh, um, when you receive this email invitation, you'll, you'll click this button. In fact, as a best practice, what I do is I will right-click this button in my email and I'll copy the URL, and then I'll go to um, a, a Chrome incognito window and paste it. If you're not familiar with that, then you can also go to any browser window and just paste it there. But you just want to make sure that the browser that you paste it into is um, not already logged into QuickBooks Online, so that when you accept it, and the invitation, the first thing it will ask you to do now is to log in. And this will help any of those of you who have had 
different Intuit IDs in the past, you don't want to cross those, right? So <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about first how do I how to get QBOA. If your accounting practice has a QBOA firm already, then the QBOA firm owner or admin will invite you as a team member and give you access to some of the firm's QBO client companies, or all of them. It's up to your firm. If your practice does not have a QBOA firm yet, you can get one in one of two ways. First of all, you can sign up for QuickBooks Online Accountant uh, by visiting a URL. And um, I will, I'll post this at the end in the answer section, but it's quickbooks.intuit.com slash start slash QBA, QBA dot underscore sign up. So when you do this, you'll select a region and enter your name and information about your firm. Um, and then if you already have an Intuit ID, then you'll sign in uh, there. The second way to do it, and this is the way I usually do it, is to be invited as the accountant user by a QBO company. The first time one of your QBO client companies invites you as the accountant user, then um, you'll receive this email invitation that the print screen is showing on screen. And you'll either um, and you'll click to accept it, and that's when you'll sign in with your Intuit ID, or you'll create an Intuit ID if you don't have one yet. And then you will be um, then you will be logged into QBOA for the first time. And when you accept this invitation, <clears throat> then your client list will add that company as the first. In this case, if you did not have QBOA before, then it will add that QBO company for your client as the first client in your client list. So um, again, tip: a tip is before you click that email to accept the invitation as the account user, be sure that you log out of QBO or QBOA or any other Intuit site. Um, and again, best practice I do is to right-click that button to accept the invite. And I copy the URL, and then I jump into a Chrome Incognito browser and paste it. So this is just what we found to um, kind of give you the best case scenario. Um, another thing I want to talk about quickly here is the Intuit ID. I just want to talk a little bit about the firm versus the individual accountant. So some QuickBooks Online consultants are finding it advantageous to create a separate Intuit ID for the firm. <clears throat> for example, you could create an email address called qboa at yourfirmdomain.com. So for us, we're redmondaccounting.com. So maybe we create a firm Intuit ID called qboa at redmondaccounting.com. Or, you know, <clears throat> be creative. You might want to be QBO Rockstars at whatever your firm name is, .com. Anyway, this username should be a valid email address because the firm will need to be able to receive email messages when your clients invite you as the accountant user, invite the firm as the accountant user. You will need to be able to receive the email address in order to accept the invitation. But what this does is this moves the central QBOA firm identity off of an individual and onto a firm. Um, then your clients can invite this firm user as the QBO accountant user. Um, and then from there, the firm can invite each of their staff as the QBOA team users. And we're going to go look at that today. And then you can delegate appropriate permissions and appropriate access to the client QBO companies that you want each of your staff to see. Uh, also, this allows the firm to centralize the wholesale billing plan for the firm um, and edit the billing information and manage all the wholesale client subscriptions uh, and also access the firm's books. So uh, if you do not have a client to invite you and you are not associated with another firm, but you want to kickstart your QBOA firm anyway, then decide on the Intuit ID you want to use for your new QBOA firm and sign up for QBOA at the URL. And the URL address is, I'm going to put it right here, see if someone could post that out for you. Um, and then you'll get a free QBO Plus account comes with QBOA. All of that is free for accountants. Intuit loves us very much. 
Um, and the QBO Plus account that comes in QBOA allows you to manage all the bookkeeping from your firm. So we'll take a look at that. <clears throat> When you're logging into QuickBooks Online Accountant, so let's say you've been invited and you have several clients that are in your central access list, you come in for the day and you're logging into QuickBooks Online Accountant. The way to do this is to, the same way you would log into a regular QuickBooks Online company, you navigate to qbo.intuit.com. If you have access to multiple companies or multiple firms, each one of those will be listed after you log in with your Intuit ID credentials. So you'll see these sections, which you can see on the print screen there. The print screen sort of in the back to the right is showing you just the sign-on screen where you put in your username and password. And this print screen sort of in the front left is showing you the different groups you may see. So on the top, you see the group called QuickBooks Accountant. And there you may see many firms listed. You may be a freelancer that does work for various firms and you would see the name of each firm that you do work for. When you click on each of those firm names, then it will take you into the list of clients that that firm has given you access to. The second group says QuickBooks Companies. <clears throat> this is a list of all the active QuickBooks Online companies that the Intuit ID that you logged in with is linked to as a regular user. So remember I was talking to you about when your client is in their QBO company, this is say the business owner or the manager of the business, and they navigate to gear icon, manage users. Remember I was saying that they can set up their regular users or they can go to the bottom section and invite an accountant user. So if they did not invite you as an accountant user and they invited you as a regular user, for example, uh, QBO Essentials is the middle level version of QuickBooks Online. They are allowed to have three users, regular users. Your client may have invited you as one of those three users and not as the accountant user. If they did that, then their QBO company name is going to show up in this group and that's how you would access it. So if you want to use the QuickBooks Online accountant tools that we're going to talk about today, then you want to have that client go back to their manage user screen and uh, maybe delete you as a regular user and invite you as the accountant user instead. And then that third group at the bottom is the group of canceled companies. And this is a list of all of the inactive QBO companies um, that the Intuit ID you logged in with is linked to. And again, that's if they had invited you as a regular user and if the QBO company has now been um, inactive. So the subscription is no longer active. And you'll still be able to jump into these companies um, for uh, a good bit of time that you won't be able to add new activities, uh, uh, but you will be able to view um, a lot of the information in QBO after it has gone inactive. So from here, choose the QBOA firm or the QBO company that you want to jump into and click on its link and you will be in that QBO company. Okay, so when I'm going to assume now that we have selected from the top group, from the <coughs> QuickBooks Online um, firms, and um, for some of you, there's just going to be one firm. For others of you, there will be multiple firms. Click the link for the firm that you want to log into. And when you do, you'll now be in QuickBooks Online Accountant for that firm. Um, when you do that, there is a left navigation bar that looks like this. It is split into two sections, the top section and again, it's on your left, it's in navy blue. The top section is called your practice, and the bottom section is called your books. And these sort of act like an accordion in that when you click on your practice, that section will open up and show you three options, and you can see this print screen on the left. The your practice section includes tabs that show information about your client, and team, and access to your ProAdvisor portal. 
Um, if you recall the last section, the client list, um, or the client list that we're going to see coming up includes information and tools to work with your clients. If you click on the team tab, you're going to see a list of all your team members and the number of clients they have access to and things like that. Um, and then the Pro Advisor tab gives you full access to your Pro Advisor portal. And you'll find certification training and exams and all that sort of information. We're going to look at all that today. The second section called Your Books, if you click on Your Books, then the Your Practice se section will now close. And the Your Books section will open. Um, and the Your Books section is going to start to look like the left navigation bar when you jump into a QBO company. And this is actually a full QuickBooks Online Plus company that you receive free when you sign up for QuickBooks Online Accountant. It's a fully functional QBO company um, and even includes QuickBooks Online payroll subscription. So next, let's talk about the top navigation bar. The top navigation bar in QuickBooks Online Accountant is green. When you first log in and into uh, QBO and you select the firm you want to jump into, you jump into that QBOA firm, and your um, top navigation bar is going to be green. And this green signifies that you're in QuickBooks Online Accountant. From QuickBooks Online Accountant, you can then jump into your different clients' QBO companies. And when you do that, then you'll see this top navigation bar will change to a light blue color. And this helps give, give you a visual uh, a designation that you're either in QBOA or that you're in somebody's QBO company. So that's helpful <clears throat> to know. And um, if you ever want to get back quickly to QuickBooks Online Accountant, then you can see when see the top screenshot shows all green bar, and then the bottom screenshot shows that it turns light blue when you go to a QBO company. But you see on the bottom screenshot, the left corner still stays green. And you can always click that green. It acts like a button. You can click that green section there and jump right back into QBOA. Um, which is out at the firm level. So let's explore this top navigation bar a little bit. So say we're staying in QuickBooks Online Accountant and we have not yet jumped into a QBO company for one of our clients. Let's just go along the top navigation bar. Um, I told you that that top left corner stays green all the time. You can always click it to jump back here to QBOA, QuickBooks Online Accountant. The next thing here I have um, outlined in red, this is called the Client Switcher. This is very helpful to um, jump between one client's QBO company to another client's QBO company. So when you click on the Client Switcher, you'll see a drop-down list with all of the names of the clients that you have access to for this QBOA firm. Now, below that, we're going to look at this coming up here. You're going to see that there is already a grid with a list of QBO companies, all your clients. And you can use that grid below to jump into a QBO company also. So where this client switcher comes in handy is when you've already jumped into a QBO company and you don't want to take the several seconds it would take to go back to QBOA and then jump into another QBO company, this client switcher uh, stays on this top navigation bar even when you jump into QBO companies. So let's say you've jumped into one of your client's QBO companies and you want to jump right directly over to another client's QBO companies. That's when it's fastest to use this client switcher. Following along that top navigation bar, next we have the plus icon, which is called the quick create button or some people call it the global create. Um, and you all are probably familiar with this because we have the same plus icon in QuickBooks Online. 
Uh, and that's where you go in QuickBooks Online to create something new, a new transaction, a new invoice, a new check, something like that. Well, we have this plus icon also in QuickBooks Online Accountant. And when you're in the QuickBooks Online Accountant firm and you click the plus icon, instead of creating transactions, this is a quick way to create a new client, a new team member, which is your staff, or a new request to a client. And we're going to look at all those three things coming up. But this plus icon is where you can quickly start a new one. Okay, everyone, we're at our first CPE keyword. This keyword is Cyclops. Okay, so everyone write that down. Make a mental note. And I'm moving on. <laughs> okay, still on that top navigation bar in QBOA. Next, we have a, a search box. And this search box is tied to the firm's QuickBooks Online Accountant, your books, QBO company. So um, when you use the search box, you can look for recent transactions on the firm's books. You can search for specific text. You can search for amounts. You can search for reference numbers. You can search for specific reports. But it is searching your firm's, your book's QBO company. It is not globally searching. It is not. Just want to underline that. It's not globally searching every transaction and all of your clients together. This is searching your book's QBO company for your firm. Um, next along the top navigation bar, we have the gear icon. And you're familiar with this in QuickBooks Online. The gear icon is where you access many of the settings, the global preferences for that QBO company. In this case, in the QuickBooks Online accountant firm, when the bar is green all across the top, um, it's slightly different than when in QuickBooks Online. So when you click this gear icon, it sort of plays a dual role here in QuickBooks Online accountant. The left three columns are associated to the settings for the firm's books. This controls the firm's, your books, QuickBooks Online company settings um, and lists and tools, just as they do in a QuickBooks Online company. So this next screenshot I have, um, I've now outlined this far right column, this fourth column, this is associated to the QuickBooks Online Accountant firm. And these are the settings for QBOA. So there is a your account section where you can access and edit information about your firm and where you can manage the wholesale billing subscriptions for your clients. You can update the firm's credit card billing information because when you are using the wholesale billing option, in QBOA, all of the charges for all of your QBO clients that you put on wholesale billing, and you know that you get 50% off for the lifetime of that client's QBO subscription, when you put it on wholesale billing, Intuit will charge you, the firm, and you'll need to have the firm's credit card billing information set up here. Intuit will then charge the firm once a month for all the QBO clients, and then um, you will turn around and be responsible for whether you're going to collect the fees from your client directly or whether you're just rolling that into the charges that you have set up for that client. Um, this is also where you can add and remove clients from wholesale billing, and you can upgrade your client subscriptions to QuickBooks Online Plus if they're on a lower version like Essentials. This section is also where you, you can access your team. They have some videos and welcome guide. You can also jump into the sample company here, the sample company for QuickBooks Online Accountant. If you go in here from QBOA Firm, will uh, allow you to have this green bar and the QBOA tools. Uh, we also have access here to feedback and into its privacy statement, which is actually pretty cool to check out into its privacy statement. Sometimes when you have clients who are asking you questions, about how secure is this. Um, there's some good information here on Intuit's 
public privacy statement. And then you also have the button here to sign out or switch company. So this switch company is actually interesting. The switch company button will let you jump back. Remember when I showed you the screenshot of when you first log in and you have access to maybe you have different firms that you work in? You could switch company and go right back out there and then click to enter a different QBOA firm if you need to do that. Um, and then finally, um, next to that gear icon is the um, help menu. And here you can access the knowledge base, live chat. Live chat is awesome. You can find the ProAdvisor support number, and you can access the accountant community. Um, and there's just a ton of support and tutorials and training and stuff like that. OK, so underneath that toolbar, we've talked about the left navigation bar. We've talked about the toolbar across the top. Um, now let's look at when you first log into a QBOA firm, you're going to uh, default to on the left navigation bar you see in the Your Practice section, you see Clients. You're, this is the default screen that will show when you first log in. So here you've got a grid in the central part of the screen, and here's where you find information about activity from your client's QBO companies. There's actually information from each of the QBO companies that's sort of, for lack of a better word, bubbling up here into this grid without you even having to jump into their QBO company. So you can see things like, um, well, you'll see a row for each of your clients. Um, and you'll see information like the last date they closed the books. Uh, you'll see alerts and notifications for things you may want to review. You'll see bank download status. Uh, maybe their bank has become disconnected and there's an error that needs to be looked into. You'll see payroll status and items due. Now, for those of you um, international, outside of US, uh, that don't have this payroll, you probably won't have that payroll column. Um, and But for US users, you'll see payroll. You'll, US users will also see access to Intuit Tax Online. And there's also a column for any requests that you've sent to your clients sort of waiting for information back from them. Um, <clears throat> If your list of clients is so long, you may want to use the search box above the client list to start typing their name and find them more quickly. Uh, the next view we have is when, from that client list that we were just looking at, if you were to click the name of your client from that list, you will drill down into the client's contact information. This information in the header section um, may have originally been populated by the QBO company. So when the client invited you as the account and user and you accepted the invitation and their name now showed up as a new row in your client grid on the screen we were just looking at, um, but you are welcome to change this information here. So when so I drilled, I clicked into a client name to get to this screen and I'm looking at the client detail information here. I can change some of the contact information. It does not push that data back to the client's QBO company. Maybe I want to change the name. Maybe I've got three uh, commonly owned entities, and I want to sort of start them out with the same words so that they sort of group together on my client list. Or maybe I want to update the phone number or email address of the main point of contact that I work with at that company. You can change this information here, and it will show for all of your team, but it does not push that data back to QBO. So that's helpful. This header section of this client detail screen is going to show the client's name. It's going to show how many team users for your firm that you've invited to give access to this client. If you did not invite one of your team members, or let's say there are some of your staff that do not work on this client, then they will not be able to see this client name out on their client list. Uh, the QBOA team user count here, you can hover over the number to see the names of who all the people are that have access to this client. Um, you can hover over the phone icon and to view the telephone number. Uh, there's also um, an arrow that you can click to expand or collapse this header section. Uh, if you want to see more information on the top header section, you can see email, address, notes. You can type notes about this company. Um, the blue button in the upper right corner lets you create a new request for this client. We're going to talk about requests in a minute. Uh, any firm users with the proper permission to this client will find the down arrow 
on that blue button so that you can um, edit this client or make the client inactive. Uh, the edit button lets you update that contact info. Again, it does not push to the client's QBO company. Um, if you make the client inactive here, it will remove it from the firm's active client list. Remember the screen we were on just a minute ago that showed all of our clients? If any of the team members who have access to this QBO client in QBOA, again, remember, we are still in QBOA. We have not jumped into the client's QBO company. If anyone makes this client inactive, it is really just going to hide it from your client list. Uh, it does not cancel the subscription. It does not cancel your access. You can always go to your client list and click the little gear icon on the grid and select to show inactive companies, and you'll still always be able to see this client uh, as long as you're um, their accountant user. Um, so sometimes you may have a client that you only work on once a year. It might make sense to make them inactive so that you and your team members don't see their name all year round, right? You might be trying to make your client list a little more manageable. And then once a year when you go to work on them, you can just show your inactive clients and jump in and work on that client then. So um, if you collapse that top header section, you'll see below there are three tabs. There's a bookkeeping tab, requests, and documents. Uh, if your client has QBO payroll, then you'll also see a payroll tab. So again, I got to this client detail information from the client list by clicking on the client's name. Let's look now. So you can see in the screenshot here that the top header section I've collapsed, and now we're looking at the three tabs on the bottom uh, section. The bookkeeping tab shows information that is bubbling up or trickling up from the QBO company. It's a great way to review some important indicators about a company without having to drill down into the QBO company. Good summary information here. You can see the close date, who and when the last user to sign in was, the date of the last banking download, current balance sheet account balances, when they were last reconciled, um, information about changes made to closed books, also, summary information about downloaded transactions from the banking screen. You cannot change the QBO information from here, but if you want to take action on something, then some of these indicators will have hyperlinked uh, uh, that you'll be able to drill down into to get into the QBO company, and it will take you directly to the information you clicked. Uh, again, if your client has QBO payroll, then you will also see a payroll tab, and the payroll tab will show, uh, and this is for U.S., the payroll tab will show the last pay date uh, and a summary of recent tax payments and form filings. Um, this, so this is a great way to just sort of jump in here and check in on your client and verify that they're remitting payroll tax and filings in a timely fashion. The next tab we had was the requests tab. So when you do a new request, remember I also said in the upper right corner you could um, click the blue button on that detail screen and launch a new request. I also showed you on the plus icon at the top of QBOA from anywhere, you can add new things. And one of the new things you can do is a new request. So let's say we click to start a new request. The, um, the new request screen looks like this, what you see on the screenshot here. Uh, requests are a, a great way to let you basically track information that you're requesting from your client. So um, when you uh, are working on a particular client and you click the blue button in the upper right corner from that client's detail screen, then um, it's going to start a new request for that client. And you'll have to select the name of the user that you want to send the request to. And this is a drop-down field here. I'm in the top left here. This drop-down field is showing all the users in this client's QBO company. So you'll want to select um, which user you want to send this request to. Then you'll be able to select um, a due date if you want to. You don't have to put a due date. That's optional. But that's helpful to sort of uh, give your client some um, feeling of urgency if there is any. <laughs> uh, next, you'll fill out the subject and body of the request, just like you would on an email. Uh, the right half of the screen, as you start filling in this information, the right half of the screen is going to show you what it looks like for them. 
So on the left side, you also, after you fill out the subject and body or note um, for this message you're sending them, uh, then you could, if you want to send them a document or an attachment, you could attach something uh, that you want to send them here. Um, and then the on the left side, the bottom half is where you then will um, start to write some descriptive name about what information you're requesting. Perhaps you're requesting bank statements, um, information like that. Then you'll want to detail each one. Like um, you might want to put Bank of America checking account statement for May 2016, <laughs> something like that. The more descriptive you are, the better. Um, and when you do this, your uh, clients are going to be able to click on each of those. So you'll type in text here. Again, I'm on, on this screenshot. I'm on the left side, bottom half. And each of those fields is going to let you type in text. But when your client gets the request, they're not going to see text. They're going to see a hyperlink that they can click. And on each of those things, they're going to click and upload something. So you probably don't want to just put one line that says, all of your bank statements for May. You may actually want to detail those out and put Amex statement for May 2016. I think the more detailed you are here, the better. <clears throat> when your client uh, receives this message that you've sent them a request, they're going to click the button and it um, on the email, and it's going to take them to a special URL. They'll have to log in with their Intuit ID, and they'll be taken directly to that same screen. It'll be inside their QBO company, interestingly enough, but it's not a screen they can normally access from any of the navigation menus. But here's a screenshot of what it looks like. They'll be able to read your message, and they'll be able to upload the documents requested. And they can even send you a message back, but I think this is a um, really interesting uh, feature here um, is there is the inter interactive ability for them to for you to request information and for them to give it back to you and for them to watch it and track it also. From the firm side, so let's back in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Remember, from your client list, we clicked the client's name and we drilled down into the client detail screen. Um, and remember, we had the bookkeeping tab, and then I said we have the request tab. So here is the request tab. You and your firm can manage and track all of the requests that you're sending to clients. And you can see when you sent a request, when it's due or overdue. You can view the documents that your client sent you. You can view any message from your client. You can send a message back to them. And you can mark the request that's complete. So this is a pretty incredible solution for keeping up with all the supporting documentation that we often have to collect from clients. And finally, that last tab there on the client um, detail screen is called Documents. And the Documents tab is an online storage vault for your firm to store documents related to the client that may be outside of a request you made. Maybe it was information that you have access to the bank, you grabbed the statement yourself, you didn't need to send a request, and you want to put it here. So you can create folders. You can drag and drop documents into the appropriate folder. You can upload new documents. And all of the documents sent to and from your clients using QBOA requests are also found here. You can view documents, download them, print them, delete them, and move them. So all of your staff that you've invited for the firm to work on this client will be able to access these documents. So pretty cool document management system built right into QBOA for us. OK, so that was the client detail screen. Let's go back a step. When you first log into QBOA for the firm, you've got this client list. Um, remember on the plus icon at the top, um, I said this is a quick way to add a new client. So um, there is also a blue button in the upper right corner of the client screen where you can also add a new client. Several ways to do the same thing. So whichever way you choose, um, you click on that button or click the plus icon and then add a new client. Um, you're going to walk through a three-step wizard 
to add a new client. And first, you're going to enter contact information. At a minimum, you'll have to at least enter the company name. That's required um, to continue. And then on the second screen, here's the screenshot you see on the right. Here you'll want to select which version of QuickBooks Online you want for this client. You can create a QBO Essentials or Plus account with payroll or full service payroll. And as you select the various versions of QBO, you'll see pricing for that version on the right uh, panel. Um, so that's very helpful. You cannot create a simple start company here, um, but you can create QBO Essentials or Plus account with payroll or full service payroll. You can also select none. That you may be adding a uh, client to your client list that does not have QuickBooks Online. So you could create, you could select none here and the client will still be added to your QBOA client list so that you can manage requests and documents, things like that. You'll next then want to specify whether your client will pay for their subscription or whether your firm will be paying. One of the most valuable features of QBOA is the wholesale billing plan. Uh, this plan, this wholesale billing plan that Intuit uh, offers to all of us accounting professionals gives you 50% off of the QBO subscription for the life of the QBO subscription. Um, and the firm receives one monthly consolidated bill for all the clients on the wholesale plan. So um, you'll be billed or you'll be charged on the firm's credit card by Intuit, so you'll need to remember to collect payment from your client. Uh, if you put the client on your firm's wholesale plan, then you are the master admin user on the QBO company, or you can select whether you want to invite the client to be the master admin user. So that will be another option after you pick what version of QBO you want, and after you pick whether you want to put them on wholesale billing plan or whether they're going to pay, then you also will designate who will be the master admin. If you select it for your client to pay, then they do not get the 50% discount, um, but they will get the standard rates available at the time, and um, they will be prompted to enter their credit card payment information when they log into QBO. Uh, and then finally, the third screen is going to ask you to check a box next to each of your QBOA firm team users, these are your staff, uh, that you want to give access to this new QBO client. Okay, on the next screen, um, see on the left navigation bar, uh, we're in the year practice section. We were on the client's screen, and that was white, and now we're on the team screen, and that is sort of highlighted white now. So the QBOA team is made up of the staff that work for the firm, right? The, these are, and these may be contractors, freelancers, or there may be your firm's employees. Doesn't matter, can be some of both, but these are the people that you're going to give access to your uh, various clients' QBO companies. And this is a great way QBOA uh, gives us the central place to invite our team users, our staff, deactivate them, control permissions for which team users can access uh, Different things like the QBOA firm wholesale billing. Maybe you have one of your staff people who is in charge of the wholesale billing and keeping the credit card up to date for all the wholesale billing, and maybe they're, maybe the staff person of yours is working on the firm's books. And then you may have other staff you do not want working on the firm's books and do not have anything to do with the QBOA firm at all. You just want to give them access to clients' QBO companies. So this is where you do that. You navigate to the team screen on the left navigation bar, and you'll find a grid of names of all the firm staff uh, and the number of clients they have access to, their email address, that sort of thing. Okay, guess what, everyone? It's time for another CPE. The CPE word now is centennial. So jot that down. Centennial. I'll give that another quick minute. And we're moving on. Centennial. OK, so from the plus icon, remember the plus icon in the top navigation bar, we, we could create a new client. We could create a new request. We could also create a new team user. Um, the 
word on the plus icon says user, and it is referring to a team user. This is your staff. So that would be one quick way to uh, create. Say you have a new, say you've hired a new employee or hired a new freelancer, um, and you want to set them up on your book. So um, uh, you can click the plus icon and add a new user, and then you'll walk through three sections to set up the team user. First of all, you're going to have to add their name and email address. Um, and this is also where you could come back and edit and make another team member inactive. Uh, when you create a new team user, um, it will send them an invite and invite them to your QBOA firm. When you come back and edit an existing team member and make them inactive, it will no longer allow them to access QBOA for this firm. And it will also no longer allow them to access any of the firm's QBO client companies. The next tab, let me go back one and show you. First, we were on the user profile. Next, now we're looking at the new team user on the firm administration and books tab. This is where you determine what level of access to grant the team user in relation to the QBOA firm. So you can give full access to the user to allow them to edit the QBOA firm information, like the name of the firm. Uh, modify any of the other team users. So if you have a manager of your firm, you may want to give them full access. Um, they can update the firm's wholesale subscription billing, um, and they can access the firm's books. Or you can give basic access, which gives the user view-only access to that QBOA firm information, and no access to managing the team users or the subscription billing, and no access to the firm's books. You also have the option to sort of manually change these as you like, and that's a custom access, and it lets you sort of use a different mix of these permissions. And finally, on the client access tab, you'll scroll through the list of all the clients that are connected to this QBOA firm, and you can check the box next to each client that you want this team user that you're adding to be able to access. When you give them access to a QBO company, they will be an admin user. All QBOA team users have admin access to the client QBO companies that they're assigned to. Remember that your QBO client invited your firm as the accountant user. They didn't invite each of your individual staff. So you control that here. When your client goes to their QBO company's um, manage user screen, your client's only going to see your firm as the accountant user. They're not going to see each of your staff's names listed as users. When your staff log in and work on that QBO company, the audit log for that QBO company will show the user your accountant. It won't say your staff member's name. It's just going to say your accountant to the client. So the client will see in their audit log that your accountant you know, deleted that transaction or something, or any of the activity that's associated to any of the work performed by your firm's team users. Okay, so here is a look at the where you add the new staff uh, user, team user, sorry, I should say team user. On the left navigation bar, it's called team for the team screen um, and the list of your team. When you go to the plus icon or the blue button, the word is called user, but uh, those are all the same thing. Team user stat is sort of referring to your staff. This is how you create a new one. Back to the left navigation bar in your practice, the third section here is the ProAdvisor uh, screen. So as a ProAdvisor, you are um, a member of a community of over 100,000 other professionals in the world, and you can tap into valuable insight and tools. In addition to managing your clients and your team, QBOA also lets you manage your ProAdvisor membership. And each of your team users uh, can also manage their own ProAdvisor memberships. So if your staff have not joined the ProAdvisor program, they can take advantage of those benefits by joining. Um, and, if they, and once they have, they can manage their membership here. Uh, the header information on the ProAdvisor screen here in QBOA is going to show your membership status, silver, gold, or diamond. All members have free access to QBOA, 
uh, discounts on software and services, QBO training and certification, all for free, tons and tons of training and certification, um, special pricing on third-party apps, subscription to the ProAdvisor newsletter, um, and the uh, dedicated U.S.-based phone and chat support for QuickBooks Online. So silver members mean that uh, the individual is not QBO certified yet, or that they that the firm has fewer than five paid online clients. Once the individual gets certified, or once the firm has between five and 19 paid online clients, then you're gold member. And gold members also receive additional benefits. They can list on the Find a Pro Advisor directory. Um, and you have now you've now unlocked access to the QBO Advanced Training and Certification. And finally, the diamond members are they're either individually advanced QB certified or they have or the firm has 20 or more online clients. Diamond members receive all of the benefits granted to the gold members, plus diamond members also receive premium support. And advanced certified diamond members receive priority ranking on the Find a Pro Advisor directory. So the first time you navigate uh, to the Pro Advisor section of QBOA, you'll see a welcome screen, um, and you can link this to your Pro Advisor membership if you haven't done that already. Once you, so that there I was talking about the top header section of that Pro Advisor screen. On the bottom half of the screen, you'll see a bunch of tabs that have a bunch of information in here. You'll see the certification tab. This is where you can go in and see a list of all of the QuickBooks desktop and QuickBooks online certifications that are available for you. You'll want to click the tiny little triangle arrow next to the certification name to expand it and see all of the different sections of the certification. There's just a wonderful amount of information in there. Lots of live training that you can pause, stop, replay. Um, and then there are also PDF supplemental guides if you prefer to see it in um, sort of a written form. Uh, the next tab is the profile. This is where you want to upload your picture and put some information about the services you offer and uh, make your profile live. Uh, just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of small businesses every year are looking at this Find a Pro Advisor directory, searching for someone to help them with QuickBooks. So you want to be there. Um, next tab is training. There are a lot of other training outside of certification for latest releases and best practices and all sorts of information and videos and PDF guides uh, for further training. Um, another tab is discounts. The discounts tab gives you a central place to find all of the opportunities uh, that you as a pro advisor can take advantage of with your clients. So you'll find software um, specials and also special offers on apps. There's a link in there that uh, I just want to point out that give you um, special access to offers on apps that have partnered with Intuit, such as Bill.com, uh, HubDoc, T-Sheets, um, and you'll want to uh, click to find these offers and take advantage of them. Um, you've also got a tab here for resources, um, tons of great tips for growing your practice and moving clients online, sample engagement letters, information on value pricing, QuickBooks Online customer case studies, whole bunch of good stuff in there. And finally, the tab called notifications is a central place to keep up to date on all things Pro Advisor, so you can stay in the loop with some of the notifications sent out to pro advisors. Okay, so on the left navigation bar, that was the Your Practice section. The other thing you can open up like an accordion is your books. And every QBOA firm includes a QBO subscription, QBO Plus, that the firm can use for its own bookkeeping. So this is, it's just like QuickBooks Online. Um, I'm not going to take you too much through here because you probably already know QuickBooks Online, but just know that this is how you navigate to it. You go to your books, um, and not all of your team members may have access to it, only the ones that you gave access to. Um, and the really one thing that you need to know about this is that whatever uh, customers you add here to your customer center in your books are going to be added to your QBOA firm client list. Likewise, or vice versa, any QBO clients that invite you as an accountant user and you accept and it 
puts it out on your QBOA firm client list is going to be added to your firm's, your book's customer list. So those two lists, the client list out in QBOA and the customer list here inside your books are linked. They're mirrors of each other. Another thing to know about this year books is that regular client QBO companies have a 60-day time limit in which they have to convert data from QuickBooks Desktop if they're going to do it before the QBO company sort of locks down. And for this, for your firm, for the yearbooks inside your QBOA firm, um, you have a larger uh, limitation. You have, I think it's 1,060 days. So uh, just keep that in mind. You have more time there. So if you, if you haven't, if you've been keeping your firm's books on desktop and you want to move them to QBO, then you can push that here. Okay, so then the next thing we want to talk about is, remember I said that if you log into QuickBooks Online, qbo.intuit.com, and you select a firm from that top group, so you drill into your firm, and, and we just went through all of the wonderful benefits there all your central access to your clients, all the client details and their requests and document storage and all this really cool stuff, all the ability to access central um, collaboration with your team members, all the access to your ProAdvisor, all that cool stuff. But remember I also said that if you go to your QBO, to your client's QBO companies from QBOA, you also have tools inside your client's QBO companies that are built for accountants. And some of them you only get if you came through QBOA. So that's what we're going to spend the rest of today talking about is those accountant tools that are inside QuickBooks Online because you entered the QuickBooks Online company from a QuickBooks Online accountant. So here's a list of those tools on screen. So let's go look at them. Remember that the top navigation bar turns a light blue color when you jump into one of your client's QuickBooks Online companies. Um, on this screenshot, the screenshot on the left is showing you a portion of that top toolbar, navigation bar. Um, just to the left of the screenshot would be that green corner called Accountant that you can click and go back to QBOA. But right next to it is a picture of a toolbox. Can you see that icon? It's a toolbox, and then it has the name of the QuickBooks Online company that you're in. If you click that toolbox, now we're on the right screenshot here. When you click that, the icon of the toolbox will actually turn a darker navy, and you'll see this drop-down menu. This menu and that icon of that toolbox is only showing for those of you accountant users that accessed this QBO company from QBOA, QuickBooks Online Accountant. Um, so these tools have been placed into this menu for us. This menu is only accessible to you, but I do want to clarify that some of the tools here are tools that are only available to you as the accountant user. Some of the other tools here on this menu are available to all the QBO company users. Your client may be able to use them, but Intuit has put them here so that they're, they're tools that we use frequently so that they're right at your fingertips and put them all on this menu. <clears throat> so for example, and we're going to go look at each of these, but um, trial balance, uh, reclassified transactions, uh, voided deleted transactions, these are accountant-only tools. Um, but we also have um, options here on this menu, such as journal entries, reconcile. These are tools that your clients also use, and they can get to from uh, the gear icon or the plus icon. Um, so just so you know, this menu is only available to you. you. If you tell your clients to go look on the top navigation bar for the toolbox, they won't see this toolbox menu. They'll have to get to the journal entry by clicking the plus icon 
or they'll have to go to the gear icon to get to reconcile. But for you, you have this menu here. So let's go through some of these tools. The first tool there, it used to be called Books to Tax. It's now called Trial Balance. This is for US users. Uh, the Trial Balance feature was designed um, with the intention to save some time at year end uh, by taking all the balances in the QuickBooks Online company, allowing you to make some adjustments, and then and then pushing the information to Intuit Tax Online, which has recently been renamed ProConnect. Um, so what you'll see when you come to the trial balance screen is on the top half of the screen you'll see this activity timeline. This timeline um, will let you show all activity or you can filter it. Uh, and this will show you uh, the client and accountant activities that are impacting balances. <clears throat> then on uh, the lower half of the screen, you'll see um, the working trial balance, and you'll see some columns here. One of them is the unadjusted balance column. So when you start trial balance, the unadjusted balance column is frozen to protect the work you're doing on the review. Uh, any further charges that you or your client make are going to appear in the adjusting entries or other transaction columns. So next you'll see another column. I'm sorry, I didn't advance that slide. Let me give you a minute to look at that. You see on the top, you see the <clears throat> activity timeline showing you the um, information that of activity that impacts balances. And then on the lower half of the screen, you see the working trial balance tab. And here are showing um, the uh, account balances. So we've got the um, unadjusted balance column. And then next, you've got the adjusting entries column. That's showing uh, year-end book adjustments that you've made by journal entry in QuickBooks Online if you checked the box on the journal entry to mark it as adjusting. So um, this is an adjustment that has been posted to QuickBooks Online. Um, and we'll look in a minute at where that checkbox is on a journal entry. Your clients do not have the ability to check the box to mark a journal entry as adjusting. Only accountant users coming into QBO from QBOA will have the option to mark a journal entry as adjusting. No other transaction types in QBO have a checkbox to mark it as adjusting. That's only on a journal entry. OK, the next column over you'll see is other transactions. The other transaction column displays changes that were made after you started doing this trial balance work, <clears throat> such as reclassified transactions or prior year client changes or any new journal entries that were entered that were not marked as adjusting. And finally, you've got the work papers column. This lets you add notes and attach documents that are viewable only by you and the other uh, team users within your firm who are working on this client. So these notes and attachments are automatically saved for future use. OK, then you'll see the for the lower half of the screen, we were on the screenshot is showing you the tab for the working trial balance. The other tab is called tax mappings. And um, when you select the type of tax form for the entity, then pre-assigned tax lines for each account balance are going to be assigned um, to help you uh, easily post the balances into Intuit Tax Online, now called ProConnect. And then any unmapped accounts will be shown for you at the top of the screen so that you can manually assign the tax line. You can also edit any of the tax lines that were pre-assigned if you want to change them. So you want to make sure to do those tax mappings. Um, and then you'll click the Finish Review button. This lets you freeze your adjustments and your balances, sort of freeze this workspace, and um, also lets you archive all your work into a zip file if you want that. You can unfreeze the work. If you do need to go back and edit it, you can unfreeze it at any time. Uh, there's also a button to update unadjusted balance button. This will move the data from the other transactions column to the unadjusted balance column. Your adjusting entries, notes, and your attachments, everything else will remain intact. 
And finally, there's a View Tax Return button. And this will post all your clients' tax mapping balances into Intuit Tax Online. So all your adjustments and your notes and your attachments will be automatically saved here on the trial balance screen. Here is a screenshot of Intuit Tax Online ProConnect. After your adjustments have been made, then you can jump over into the tax return um, and uh, continue from there. But just really such a time saver to be able to push the information from QuickBooks Online. Okay, the next tool on our toolbox after trial balance is the reclassified transactions tool. And this is used to move transactions in batch from one account to another. This tool can be used when, let's say, a bunch of transactions have been posted to the wrong account, and you want to reclassify them all at one time into a different chart of accounts, say, say an expense account. Or maybe you have a bunch of transactions that are posted to a parent account and you need to move them into the sub-accounts. Or maybe you have transactions that are posted to the proper account, but, they're, um, but the company is using class tracking and they did not specify a class or they put them to the wrong class. This tool not only reclassifies in batch from one account to other accounts, but also reclassifies the class. And you can do, you can reclassify the account and the class at the same time, or you can leave the account alone because you want to leave it in the account where it's posted, but you can do class only uh, if you just want to uh, specify what class it's posted to. Note that you can only reclassify accounts and classes, you cannot yet, hopefully, hopefully that's coming, but you cannot reclassify if you're using location tracking. You will not find the location field there. You cannot reclassify the uh, if you're doing job costing and you are associating expenses to customers. You cannot reclassify customer or sub-customer, which is job. Um, but you can reclassify accounts and classes. Also note that you can only reclassify accounts for transactions that are using accounts on the transaction screen, not items. So if the transaction is using an item, like an invoice, then you need to change the item posting. Either you need to go to the product and service item and change what income account, for example, that it's posting to, or you need to go to the individual transaction and change what item code it's using. Okay, but for all your transactions that are posted directly to accounts, this is a fantastic tool. I use it all the time. In fact, we use this tool a lot. On the left screenshot, you'll see a list of each of the accounts. You set the date range and you set the um, whether you want to look at balance sheet or P&L accounts, and then you'll see on the left side the list of all those accounts, either balance sheet or P&L accounts. And you click on each one, and then the right screenshot will show you all the transactions that are in that account. We use this for uh, month end close. When you're going to reconcile all the balance sheet accounts and then you want to review all those P&L accounts, I just go through here clicking on each P&L account, and on the right side I'm just looking at the kind of activity there. Not only is it an interactive way for me to peek inside without going to reports and drilling in and out of a P&L between a summary and detail report, but this lets me also quickly take action if I need to reclassify something. Okay, so that reclassify transaction tool available to accountants from QBOA, not available to your clients or any of their regular users. Uh, the next tool on the accountant toolbox is the voided deleted transactions tool. And this is simply a shortcut to the audit log through the accountant tools. And this, um, it's like it takes you to the audit log and quickly filters to only show you voided deleted transaction. And, um, so this is just a really quick way to get to this. Uh, and you can set your own date range. You can use the filters to drill down even further if you want to see transactions voided or deleted by a particular user or only in a certain account. And then you can use the view link on each of the rows to see all of the history associated with the transaction. 
So this is a good report to review on a regular basis. It could identify areas where an employee is having difficulty with things, um, or there may be a lot of voided and deleted transactions by a particular employee, so it may just need more training. Maybe there is some um, something going on there related to fraud. I don't know, but that's something you want to watch. If the transaction has been deleted and you click View, you will see all of the detail of how the transaction was added and any edits that were done to it, but you cannot restore a deleted transaction. Once a tr transaction is deleted, it is um, gone, but you could recreate it because the information will be there. Okay, next we have the Write-Off Invoices tool. And this allows you to search. This one also is only for accountants. Um, your clients will, and their regular users will not be able to use this tool. This allows you to search for a specific date range and you specify what date range you want to look at and what balances under a certain amount. So you might say, you know, I want to look at, for this year, all invoices that have balances under $10 or whatever you set. You can specify that. And then once you set those filters, it will show you a list of all of the invoices that fit that criteria. And you can sort by name or however you want to uh, review these. And then once you, um, on each row, you select the invoice that or invoices that you want to write off. And the, hold on, my screen and test. <laughs> my screen advanced two slides. You got to see what's coming up next. OK, back to write-off invoices. When you put in the criteria, it shows you a list of the invoices that fit that criteria. You check the boxes for each row for the invoices that you want to write off. In the lower left corner, you're going to select what account you want to write it off to. This could be a discount account. It could be bad debt expense. It could be an income account, whatever is appropriate for the situation. Then you'll click the button to preview and write off. And this gives you a chance to review the selections. Um, uh, and then you can click the button to actually write off the invoices. Um, when you see the summary of the write off, uh, that'll allow you the opportunity to take or save a screenshot of any of these changes if you want to. And then you'll go ahead and click the write off button. It will write it off to um, the, the date of the original invoice. So if you are writing off invoices, say, from last year, and last year is closed, then you probably do not want to use this tool. Because what this tool does is it doesn't create a new transaction as of today's date to make the write-off. It goes to each of those invoices, and it uses the discount field to write off that um, amount. So also take note that if sales tax is involved, you might want to create credit memos rather than using this feature, because this feature does not adjust sales tax or, or sales taxable income. But um, you could use this screen as the basis for creating those credit memos to find the criteria for which ones you do want to write off. OK, next we're on to journal entries. So remember I told you that journal entries, of course, your clients can make journal entries. We Accountant users can make journal entries, but we have this checkbox. See on the print screen here in the upper right corner, there's a checkbox that says, is this an adjusting journal entry? So if you check this box, then it will be marked as an adjusting journal entry. Even, and now remember, I'm showing you all the options on the accountant toolbox. If you go to the plus icon where your uh, clients would go to create a new journal entry, and you go to plus icon and you create a new journal entry, you're also going to see that adjusting journal entry box there. It doesn't matter how you get to journal entry. If you, the accountant user, came into QBO from QBOA, and you go to create a journal entry, then you will have this checkbox available to you so that you can sort of tag this journal entry as adjusting. And this allows you to um, have these entries show up on the trial balance. Remember, we looked at that. Um, and then you also can get reports. There are reports in QuickBooks Online accountant that allow us to get a report on adjusting entries and also view an adjusted trial balance report. 
Um, so nothing more to say about journal entries that you don't already know about QuickBooks. Uh, of course, your debits have to equal your credits. Um, well, I'll call out a couple of other things. Uh, you can enter more than one line to an AP or AR account in the same journal entry. That's very cool. Um, another difference to know is that if you're using QuickBooks desktop, journal entries you can mark as billable to customers. You, do, you cannot mark line items on a journal entry as billable to customers in QuickBooks Online. There's no billable checkbox on the line items. So just some interesting things to take note of. Um, next, we will look at our CPE keyword. Here's our third CPE keyword. It's domino. So everybody take note of that. Domino. Write it down. I'll give you a minute. OK, that's it. Moving on. The next tool that you'll find in the toolbox is called Close Books. And this is a feature in QuickBooks Online that lets us lock the transactions prior to a certain date, whatever date you put in here. So you can either enter a date, and anyone who tries to post a transaction prior to that date is going to get a message that says, this is closed. Are you sure this period is closed? Are you sure you want to um, enter this transaction? If you want to make it harder for them to post that transaction, you can put a password on it so that they will have to enter the password if they want to post a transaction prior to that. Um, so uh, this is not an accountant-only tool. Your clients can navigate to the gear icon and go to the account and settings, which used to be called company settings. And on company settings or account and settings, they can go to the advanced page and find the close date section, close books. But this is a quick way for accountants to get there. When you use the close books or closing date in QuickBooks Online, you will also be able to run the closing date exception report so that if you want to look at a report of any of the transactions that um, were posted that were prior to the last close date, then you can get this great report. That's a good thing to check in on. Next, we have the Reconcile tool. Again, this is available for everyone using QuickBooks Online. <coughs> uh, you can get to it from the Accountant Toolbox. You can also go, like your client, to the gear icon in QBO and go to Reconcile. Um, the Reconcile screen, of course, is, um, as you know, if you've worked in QuickBooks Online, a really, or QuickBooks Desktop, either of them, <laughs> the Reconcile tool is a great tool to reconcile all your um, checking account, credit card statements, any other balance sheet accounts you want to mark as reconciled. Um, some really cool features about it are that um, it will allow you to reconcile to the statement, ending date, and balance of a particular account. And then if any changes are made to reconciled transactions, you will see a column here called changes. Now your clients also see this. And so if you come back the next month to reconcile a certain account and, you'll, and you see an amount in the changes column, then you can click on that hyperlink and a window will pop up and show you every transaction that had been reconciled as part of that reconciliation for that month or that period. And it will show you everything, including if a transaction was deleted. And from there, from that pop-up screen, you could even click on each of those. So if somebody, uh, you know, say a check had cleared for $1,000 and somebody accidentally changed the amount to $1, You'll see the change there. You can click through to the transaction and change the amount back to 1000 and save and close. So one thing special that I want to point out here is on the top screenshot here, you'll see the Reconcile screen. This is what it looks like when you come in to Reconcile. Uh, you'll pick which bank account or checking account you want to reconcile. Um, and you'll and below that, once you pick the account, you'll see a list of all the reconciliations for that account. Well, um, if you hover over each of those rows, you will get a button called Undo. And the Undo button is um, not available to your client. So that is special for accountant users. 
Okay. So the next screen we're going to look at is accountant reports. So all of these reports that are available in QuickBooks Online for your client are also available to accountants. There are also four additional accountant reports. They are the adjusting journal entries report. Remember, your client doesn't even get that adjusting checkbox on a journal entry. So, of course, they won't have an adjusting journal entry report. You also have access to the adjusted trial balance report and um, two other reports, profit and loss comparison report and balance sheet comparison report. So those four are available for you um, pre-built, pre um, and you'll get to them by going to the Report Center, and you'll find a tab called Accountant Reports. There are also a bunch of other reports here in the Accountant Reports section that your client has access to also in, when they go to All Reports. Um, and we've, they've just been included here because they're ones that accountants also use frequently. Next, I just want to highlight management reports. This is also on the Accountant Toolbox menu. Um, it's just one click, quick access to go to management reports. Management reports are also available to your client and any of their QBO users, but they're really beautiful, uh, customizable sort of folios, right? You can group together a bunch of reports into a reporting package. You can define a title page and a table of contents and headers and footers and really make a lovely um, uh, company financial report, um, reporting package really, and you can uh, uh, save it. You can, in, you can include multiple reports in it, including customized reports. So that's management reports. Next we have, um, Custom reports. So that is found on your toolbox, but if you know the QuickBooks Online Report Center, custom reports is also available on the Report Center, but your accountant toolbox will take you there directly, um, and your clients also have access to theirs. And this is where any, if you've taken any standard out of the box report and customized it and saved it, then this is where you'll get to your custom reports. And then we've got some report tools. So this is a really interesting. From the accountant toolbox, you'll go down to reports tools. Your clients do not have access to this. And this lets you put in a, a specific date range. You might choose last month. Let's say you're closing the books for last month. And every time you go to look at another report, it's putting some other date range in. Well, if you go to report tools and set the date range for last month, or you could key in some custom date range, all the reports you run thereafter are going to default to that date range, whatever you set here in report tools. And it's not just reports. It's also, remember the batch reclassify screen? That also will default to whatever uh, date range you put here. So that's a very handy tool. Um, and then finally, a couple more tools on the accountant toolbox. We've got quick access to the chart of accounts, which you know you and your clients can also access by going to the left navigation menu under transactions. But this um, toolbox also has allows you to jump right to the chart of accounts. Um, and then finally, we've got this option called New Window. So for those of you who don't know it, let me state it right now that QuickBooks Online, absolutely you can work in QuickBooks Online in more than one window. So if you're, say, you're doing a reconciliation and you also want to have a register open, you can have multiple windows. And the way you do that is that if you're using Chrome browser, you can right-click the tab and duplicate. For anybody who has trouble with that or they're not using Chrome or for whatever reason, if you're an accountant user, you can come to your accountant toolbox and come down a new window here. And that will pop up a new window for you. Okay, everyone, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I will stay on the line if anyone wants to ask any questions. This session will be available in the auditorium in 24 hours, so you can rewatch it if you missed anything. Um, and if you're interested in studying any more about this topic of QuickBooks Online Accountant, I highly recommend the QBO certification training. <clears throat> okay, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me today.